So uh, my name is Matt Cortina. I'm the managing editor uh, at Boulder Weekly, which is an alternative news weekly. Um, we've been in uh, business for 25 years. Um, and I'll get into a little bit later about you know, what it means to be independent in, um, you know, in today's media landscape. Um, but I wanted to start uh, by talking a little bit about my career. Um, you know, I started in journalism 10 years ago um, when, I, when I got out of college. Um, because I think that maybe it illuminates from the inside out some of the challenges that reporters face and that um, reporters coming up today um, are, are facing. So when I went to, uh, when I went to journalism school, uh, I think I learned more in my English classes about how to tell a story, um, how to use multimedia than I did in, in my journalism classes. There was, no, there was maybe one working journalist um, who was a professor. Uh, at the at the college, and you know that's not necessarily to I, I don't say that to denigrate you know Rutgers, um, even though there's there's plenty of reasons to do so. Um, <laughs> I I say that because it's uh, you know it it, it foreshadows a, a problem that that I saw um, you know in in the early parts of my career, which was that you know we were kind of we we still may be uh, behind some of the changes that the that the digital age have brought in. Um, you know, it's one thing to learn about, you know, ethics and how to write, you know, a basic, you know, pyramid-style story. Um, but we're not learning about how to, you know, it, interact with social media and, and um, you know, find you know, various uh, sources that, um, that we know to be trustworthy um, in, in, this new, in this new age. Um, so when I, you know, when I, when I graduated, I, uh, I had a few uh, jobs, it was the recession, so I was just trying to cobble together a career. Um, and then I got a job in, in New York at this, at this publication uh, that, that really was not great. Um, and their whole thing was that they would um, see what's trending on Google and then try to write a story as quick as possible so that Google would, would pick it up. Um, and then that way that they would generate a lot of hits and then they can sell, you know, you know we get however many unique viewers. Um, to our website. So um, when, I, when I then got a job at, at a real newspaper, uh, one of the things that I, that I think stood out about me was that I was able to say that, you know, I have 100,000 unique visitors to my story. You know, they weren't concerned that I was writing garbage, that I was writing crap, that I was writing things that are literally regurgitated and have no bearing in, in journalism ethics. Um, they were, you know, they were more concerned uh, about how much traffic uh, I was generating. Um, so I did that for a while, then I, um, you know, I came out to, to Boulder Weekly. Um, I moved out to Boulder and I came, I came to Boulder Weekly. Um, and it was, it was kind of a, a world of difference. Uh, there, there was a focus on, on storytelling, on providing context uh, for, uh, for breaking, for, for everything from, from breaking news to press releases, all the, all the crap that we're inundated with. Um, explanatory and journalism investigations. Uh, you know, there was uh, an opportunity um, to, to provide color and context for, for what was becoming an increasingly crazy world and, and still is. Um, so somewhere in that, in that time, maybe about two years in, I, I went out to California to, to take on a managing editor position. Uh, and it was, it was kind of like, um, you know, a, it, we, we had meetings with the sales staff. Um, about you know what we were running in the paper that week, so they could coordinate uh, you know their their ads and their pitches to what kind of stories we were running, and that seemed like counterintuitive to everything you know every, all the ethics that I you know that I learned that we had to um, that I, that we had to uphold. Um, you know when I got that when I got that job when they were impressed with with the one hundred thousand uh, page views or whatever. Um, I remember they, they brought us into a meeting. It's this big, uh, it's this big company in, in New Jersey. Um, they, they own the Star Ledger and a bunch of community newspapers there. Um, and they brought us into a meeting and they asked us uh, if, if we had any ideas on how to generate more, more clicks and more views on our stories. And that's the biggest, most respected paper in New Jersey. So at this, at this new paper in California, they're, they're doing the same thing. And they're trying their hardest. I mean, they're trying to, they're trying to make a buck. I mean, they're trying to survive just, just as everybody else is. Um, but somewhere along the way, like, the job of, of the salesperson and the publisher and the sales staff 
kind of blended into the job of the journalist and the reporter. Um, and maybe that's not the case for everybody, but I mean, I encountered it, a, you know, a couple times in my career. I'm sure I'm not the I'm sure I'm not the only one who uh, who experienced that. Uh, when I was at, at at the you know at this place in California, you know, we uh, it's it was three small community newspapers, uh, and they're trying to as we're trying to figure out ways to get more people to view our stories, we're like investing you know hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars. Um, and for a small paper, that's a lot. Um, in video equipment and audio equipment, and uh, it's just it, these are these are small communities. It's it's kind of like uh, putting lipstick on a on a pig. At a certain point, um, we're not you know if if we're not focusing on telling good stories and doing good reporting, if we're focusing on the the format um, instead of the core of, of what we're saying, um, then we're gonna we're gonna lose readers no matter no matter what we do. Um, so then I came back to uh, then I came back to Boulder Weekly, and I've I've been there since. Um, you know, part of being independently owned is that um, you know I, I guess it, it varies between the between who who owns the who owns that paper. But our our owner is a guy named Stu. He likes the Grateful Dead, and he rides his bike a lot, and he stays out of the newsroom. So um, it, it's worked out. You know, it's worked out for us and. Um, you know, we're able to dive deep onto long-form news stories. Um, we're able to work in concert with the work that all these good journalists do um, and, and provide that context. We're able to take a little bit of time, um, which I think is, you know, impossible for a lot of these young journalists who, or young and old journalists who have to work at um, places where they have to churn out you know, three, four, five stories a day. When I was in New Jersey, I was turning out five stories a day. I never, I never saw, I never saw an edited version of my stories, um, which was insane because they had like they had figured out a, a process or something that that they thought was the most efficient uh, way to do it, and it it, it led to, to probably bad news. I mean, I probably should have had some <laughs> some input on it. I probably could have added something to it. Um, so the challenge of funding. So we're a, we're a free weekly, and anytime I pick up the, the Boulder Weekly, I know it's our own paper, or anytime I pick up like an alt weekly in a new city that, that's a really good alt weekly, um, I, like I, I'm just so impressed at how big it is and how much news and, and content there is in it. There is in it. I, I, think that's, I think that's rare, um, especially in, in a print media. Um, we, we put almost no uh, resources into uh, putting anything online like our website is terrible. I, it's recording, isn't it? <laughs> um, I'm probably not the only one at the paper who feels that way. Um, but we but we don't put any resources uh, online. We we don't um, you know the, the the sales team probably knows more. But we don't we don't sell a ton of online ads. Uh, most of our revenue comes through um, print ads and through these special editions that we these special magazines uh, that are topic specific. Um, that we, you know, that we put out. Um, so, you know, there, there are there are challenges to that. You know, if somebody says, uh, you know, that I can just go on Facebook and, you know, if I'm a restaurant or something, a local restaurant, and say, well, I can, you know, pay a couple thousand bucks to advertise in, in Boulder Weekly, um, or I can go on Facebook and spend, you know, a couple hundred bucks uh, and get five times as many impressions or, or, uh, or uh, people, eyeball, sets of eyeballs um, on the ad. Why would I go with, why would I go with you? Um, and of course, the, the answer to that is that if you're picking up a, a, you know, a print paper, you're within you know, driving distance at least of, of whatever um, you know, business that is. Um, and there's statistics that, that would indicate that um, you know, print ads are, are still more effective than whatever a digital impression is. You need like you know, 10 to 20, I, I don't know what the exact number is. You need a certain amount of uh, uh, views on an online ad as opposed to a print ad in order to turn that into, into revenue. But that's a really hard thing. I mean, that's, that's easy for us to conceptualize in the newsroom, but it's really hard for, uh, for advertisers because they just, I mean, they, they see a number and I don't, I mean, I don't blame them for it. I mean, they're, every industry is, you know, is just trying to, to you know, to survive, to, to make a living. So um, I, I don't blame them if they, uh, if they want to spend less um, and get and get more get more eyeballs on, even if that you know the extension of that is that it's not as effective as as advertising uh, with us. So um, 
you know, I, I think in, in some ways Boulder Weekly is, is immune to, to some of the changes, N not, not totally, but I think being in Boulder for one, I think we have a, a really educated, um, smart, uh, educated and smart are almost the same thing. Um, we, we have a really educated uh, populace and uh, yeah, dang. Um, we, have, uh, yeah, we have an educated populace who, uh, you know, who, who can stick it out for some of the long plotting stories that we put in the paper. Um, and they, you know, they're, they're, they're loyal to, to our group. So, so just being in Boulder is, uh, you know, it, it kind of, kind of supports us. I think also we, you know, we've always had a, a small-ish staff. Uh, there's five of us in the editorial department. I think there's 25 or 30 people in the entire company. And when you see all like these, like all this news about newsrooms having to cut staff, it's because they're coming from like, oh, dang. Um, it's because they're coming from like five or six hundred people and like they're just now trying to adjust. So, um, you know, we, we've always been at, at that level. Um, I, I'll, I'll end on a, on a positive note because I guess it's only one minute. Um, you know, I think, I think there's, there, this is a really good opportunity. I think the, the, you know, the reports that the death of journalism are, are overblown. Um, there's, there's a bill in the legislature right now to mandate uh, media literacy um, in schools, and I think that, that would really go a long way in helping people sort of navigate, um, you know, just get, getting them from kindergarten um, and teaching them how to navigate this tsunami and tornado of, uh, joint tsunami and tornado of information that comes their way on a daily basis. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic. I think there's um, somebody, some, some group, and, and maybe we're all a part of it right now, or, you know, we're starting to find our, our footing. And, um, you know, I think that the appetite for, for good journalism, um, for journalism that isn't just thrown at you, um, is, is still there. People still have long attention spans. They can still uh, stick to a story or a podcast um, or, you know, uh, watch, a 30, watch an entire episode of 16 Minutes. Like, it's still, people still crave that. Um, and so that, that is, that's heartening to me.